Hello and welcome to this practical training session for the Copernicus Marine Service Workshop Marine Data for Africa. My name is Ergan Fouché and I will be your trainer for this session. So this Python training session for this workshop consists of four Jupyter Notebooks, one introduction and then three exercises. So this is the first um, video about the, the first notebook the introduction, uh, in which you will learn how to download the products from the Copernicus Marine Service, as well as how to manage NetCDF files within Python. So these are Jupyter Notebooks. They consist of both text and code cells. And to run a cell, you need to click here on the arrow and uh, to run the cell. And you can also use the keyboard shortcut Shift and Enter. So as I said, this is the first notebook, the introduction. Uh, there are also three exercises. The first one will be about the upwelling phenomenon in Northwest Africa. The second one about the LOE cyclones effect on the ocean parameters. And finally, the last exercise will be about the Congo River discharge in the Atlantic Ocean. So this first notebook is rather important because you will learn how to manage the, um, the products from the Copernicus Marine Service, how to manage NetCTF files. And before diving into the other exercise, you may need to run this notebook first as the exercise will be easier then. About the data, all the data that are needed for the exercises have already been downloaded and they are available in the data directories. So here, for example, you have access to all the products needed for the exercise. However, you may want to download some data by yourself if you want to study another region or another period. And to do so, you have to make sure first that you have uh, your Copernicus Marine Service user credentials. If you don't, you can get them from this registration page. Fill the form and then you'll have access to the products. The easiest way to um, explore the catalog is directly from your browser. So here, if you click on the catalog, you access all the products that are available. You can select your parameters. So let's take temperature, for example, in global ocean. So here you, you'll see all the products that match your request. Let's take this one, for example. When you click on the product, you have access to all the information about this product. And you can click here on data access select uh, the, the data set you want. And then you can select your parameters. So the geographical area, the time range, the depth and the variables. And finally, once you have selected all your parameters, you can click here on download. If you need some help, uh, so this was a very quick overview of the catalog, but if you need some help about um, the service, you can check on this tutorial. It will show you a small video uh, that will explain you how to download the products. Another way to download the data is using directly Python and with the help of the Mochu client. <clears throat> Again, if you need help about this service, you have a dedicated web page that will teach you how the Mochu client works. 
Um, but let's take an example here of how to download the one product that will be used for the upwelling exercise. So the, the exclamation mark before the um, command line means that we are calling a Linux command. Uh, so the first words um, mention that we are using Python, then that we are using the Moto client. Then we we tell them that we are well. We specify the product that we want, then the longitude and latitude min and max, the dates uh, min and max also, and depth min and max finally. And in the end, you specify the variables that you want, and you have to set your username and passwords. Uh, then you copy this line into another cell and run it and the data will be downloaded directly. <clears throat> so now that we've seen how to download the data, we are going to see how to explore them. So the data from the Copernicus Marine Service are always uh, in NetCDF, well, they are always NetCDF files. And to, to manage such files within Python, we are going to use the library XRA. So it's really easy to use and you can use it to read, manipulate and create NetCDF files. Really, really easy to use. So the first step of the of this notebook will be to import as uh, this library here. So um, the NetCDF files, they are really, well, widely used for uh, scientific data. They contain the dimensions. So here the dimensions will be time, latitude, longitude, and depth. They also contain variables. So here uh, we have uh, asked for the temperature and the current. And finally, the product also have global attributes that describe, uh, well, that give general information. Um, so, as I said before, the products are available uh, in the data directory here. So the first step of uh, our exploration will be to specify the, the location of the product we want to to study, then we will oh, we will open the file with the XRA open data set command here, and finally display the content of the file. So to display the content of one file, you just need to specify its name, and then this window will appear, and it's really easy to explore the variables from it. So we run the the cell. You can see here that the dimensions appear. So depth, latitude, longitude, and time. Uh, the coordinates that are the same as the dimensions here. And finally, the variables. So here on the on the right, you can show and hide uh, the data and uh, show and hide attributes. So here, for example, if you want to see what's this variable you can uh, you can click here on show hide attributes and then you will see that this variable is the temperature and that its units are Celsius degrees for example so this is the the easiest way to explore the content of one file but you can have uh, there are other commands from the XRA library that we can use to make more specific uh, commands. So the data vars here will show you the list of the variables with uh, their dimensions. You can also check on the coordinates so with the, um, the command chords. So you have the coordinates that appear. Um, you can also check on the dimensions. So here we've seen that they are the same of uh, the same as the chords. 
So it's the same, they are just displayed in a different way. Another way to, um, to display the, the information on the file is to use the Linux command uh, ncdump, ncdump sorry, uh, with the, um, the path to the file that we have defined uh, here, the first cell. And so if you run it, you will, uh, you will see the raw information about the netcdf files. Um, this command, well, the, the output of this command is not really easy to read, especially for the time. Um, as you can see here that the time units are hours since 1950. And so, well, this data is not really easy to read. Such values um, are not easy to read, to read by a human. And you can see that the difference, well, if you see the X-Array here, uh, you can see that the, the library directly converts it to datetimes, and so it's much easier to read. You can also uh, check and store the variables. So um, to store the variable, you, um, you specify your, your product and then the parameter uh, between brackets here and then again you just have to to put the the name of your variable to display its content so here for the temperature for example I have access to to the variable and if you want to see uh, what's inside like the actual numbers you can use the the data command so this is the end of this notebook. It was a very quick introduction uh, on how to use uh, the CMEMS catalog and how to use the netcdf files within Python. In the, in the other exercises, you will see plenty of uh, application on how to use the, um, the X-Array library and the CMEMS products. So, um, please have a look at them. And this is the end of this uh, first Jupyter Netbooks. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next videos for the exercises. Bye.